Well, back to working on this tomorrow. Pulling the headers off, welding it up, gas tank, gotta drop that, put a fuel pump in. Stay tuned for that video. Well, it is the next day, and I am back here working on this thing. Um, this is my chariot for Hot Rod Power Tour 2022. That's coming up June 12th of this year. So I got about two months to get everything done to this that I want to get done. And I will nibble off the laundry list in a bit. But today, you can see I got it on the battery charger. It's dead. And uh, the other day, I went to go start it up, fired up. I'm like, cool. I was going to tinker around with the AC. AC kicked on, ran for a minute, and then shut off. Stalled out. That ain't good. End of the season last year, I did have an issue with this thing where I got below a quarter tank of gas and it basically ran out of fuel. So, my thoughts are either the fuel pump's bad, pickup tube fell off, something in the tank is goofy, and, or fuel filter's plugged, whatever. But for it to just die like it did, I don't know. So we're going to go ahead and test out a couple things. Um, right now, like I said, it's on the charger. But we are going to test fuel pressure, make sure we got good fuel pressure. And we already know we got spark, so because it ran. But we'll double check that. Oh, and... What else do we got? I don't know. But we'll get it back running. So does anyone that has never tested a fuel system on a car, it's pretty simple. Uh, they just sell these gauges at any your local auto parts store. Go ahead and pick them up. They're kind of a universal fitting. They will have a different coupling for your application, but I think they are pretty much standard. Uh, for the Impala, of course, you have your two fuel lines that come in back here. And there is the rail that connects and then goes over here. What you're going to want to do is you're going to find a little black cap right back here. And you're going to want to unscrew it. It's basically like a valve stem kind of cap. Hang on to it. You're going to need to put it back on. But right there is where you hook your gauge up to. So once you get your gauge snug down there, just twist on, make sure it's on there. Very uh, taunt. Um, you're gonna wanna set this up where you can read it. Um, you can see it's above here. So when we go to crank on the car, I'm gonna turn it so it's in there so I can see what it's doing. You wanna make sure it's tight so it's not leaking. And then when you go to release the pressure, you push this side guy and it pumps all the fluid fuel into the catch tube where you're gonna to wanna to catch it and not let it drop on your headers or anything. All right, so now we're back in the car and usually on these LT ones, 41 to 47 at engine off, but fuel pump on is what you wanna see the gauge shoot up to. Usually 38 to 40, 41 is what it is when it's running. So we can't get it running, but we should, as we crank the key on, watch that gauge jump up to at least 40 pounds or more. And we got nothing. Which, I don't know if you heard or didn't hear, lack of hearing. Usually when you crank the key on, you can hear the fuel pump kick on. I didn't hear the fuel pump kick on. Uh-oh. Before we go crazy tearing into the fuel tank, which we're probably going to end up doing anyway, let's go ahead and go check the fuses out. Most times, fuses aren't your culprit but I've been doing some wiring on this with the taillights and everything recently so very well could have been that for whatever reason I was back there and I clipped a fuse or something we do have one more thing we're going to check so here is the underhood schematic for 
this Chevy Impala. They did it. It's an Impala. And you can see number two right here is for the fuel pump. It's a 15 amp. We also have a relay right here, fuel pump E. So as it sits clipped on there, we're looking for this 15 amp right here. And then the first relay right here. This relay could be bad as well. But first and foremost, we're going to click the key on, get the multimeter, and we're going to check both sides of this fuse and make sure we got power coming to here. And we'll check the relay out and make sure we got power coming to here. Okay, so I have the multimeter out, $5 buy at Harbor Freight. If you guys don't have one, buy one. And mark that because that was just kind of a quick reference for me to know I used it at DCV for car stuff you can ohm it with the ohm old horseshoe guy and then you can use some house stuff over there but i'm not getting it in to use a multimeter because there's a million youtube videos out there um ground it out to the one side touch it to your positive just to make sure you got good ground and we got 13.7 13.8 because we are of course charging our battery up so that's our reference point so we should have the same similar reference point on the fuse of course this 15 is our fuel pump and it should be roughly the same 13.7 13.68 somewhere in there when we touch this side of the fuse and we go ahead and touch that there we go we got 13.7 now to test the fuse you want to go to the other side and you should have the same reading as you touch that 13.7 so we know the fuse is not blown which is good I'm sure many of you guys have gone, pulled them out with a pair of pliers or whatever, and just been like, is it blown? Is it blown? That sucks. So I just use a multimeter. It's easy. So now that we know that our fuse is good, you ever wonder what this little guy right here is for? Of course, this is going, I believe, on the 94 to 96 Impalas, Caprices, Roadmasters, Fleetwoods, you name it. 94 to 6 uh correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but this is your fuel pump bypass so what you can do is you basically hook this to a positive i wonder why they thought to do that way to go gm anyway you hook this to your fuel bypass or to a positive and what it should do is it's going to supply power to your fuel pump all the time that'll allow you to go to the back of the car check for grounds check any of that stuff up but what you do want to make sure is to have some kind of a fusible link between there and one of the little fuses of course we know that 15 is our primary target i didn't have one laying around so i built one i had the old school 15 amp fuse just laying in a box somewhere couple spade connectors red wire alligator clip and of course another spade connector to plug into that so let me get this plumbed in and show you so now that it's hooked up it should be as simple as uh you know just click it on there didn't hear the fuel pump check our gauge see what our gauge says Gauge still shows zero. So let's see. We have power coming to here. Let's touch to our battery and make sure we still have 13.8. So touch it inside the connector here and we get 13.8. So we have power going all the way back to the fuel pump for the most part. So I'm going to unhook this. We're going to get to the back of the car. I'm going to jack it up and then get to where the terminal clip is and we'll do some more testing. So when you get underneath the car, this wire here, that's going to go to your fuel pump. I don't like how that uh, actually is, so I'm going to have to do something with that because that's also for the taillights. Anyway, um... Yeah, I can maybe rub. Well, you want to just yeah, pull the tab off, unclip it, 
and that'll be for your harness. And we're going to check this pigtail out, make sure we have power coming in, we got ground coming in, so on and so forth. Right away, unclipped it, and you can see it's not supposed to be snowing out of that connector. So that tells me that thing is all corroded up and gross. Which means that one is probably all corroded up and gross too. So I'm going to pop this off. It's just simply put in there. We're going to clean it up. We're going to test it out. This black wire, of course, is your ground. This purple wire is going to be the one to go up to your fuel sending unit. And this grayish wire is your positive, your power. Um, the middle one, which was snowing there a second ago, it's my corroded up one. You can see it's green. That's not good. But I've seen worse. And same holds for the harness here. Uh, I don't see very much corrosion. Well, maybe you do. That's on the positive side. So I'm going to go ahead and clean that up and, and do some checking and see. What we should do is we put the multimeter on it and we should get uh, a power on there, but we'll have to go to the front of the car and Throw that connector, that little fuse thing that we put together back on there. So let's do that now. All right, so underneath here, we should, uh, we got our multimeter. It's on. We'll take the ground, put it to the black side, and then the gray, put it to the hot side. And we're getting some stuff kind of going on here, some science. There we go. We're getting our 13.87, 13.8. So we know we got power coming back to here. Next thing we're gonna take and check continuity from the same terminals. So we'll change it to horseshoe setting. And when you check continuity, you're basically making sure that the wires are and they connect, you get zeroed out. So when we jam these in here, we should get, get it zeroed out, which we do. So that could just mean that our connector here is dirty and it wasn't getting proper connection. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this connector up, clean that connector up, plug it back in and see if we can get this fuel pump to kick on. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm going through and I have some non-flash contact cleaner solvent. Spraying it in there, just kind of working my way around with a little uh, flathead screwdriver just to kind of clean these prongs off, get some of this corrosion off of it. Um, they're actually not as bad as I thought they were gonna be. Uh, they should have some dielectric grease thrown on them. I can't find mine, so I'm going to just kind of put it back together here in a second. But just work around, scrape off what you can. If you have a little piece of emery cloth or something, you can jam it in there and get, the, get it cleaned up and whatnot. Uh, just try to clean them up as best you can. Uh, you can also, if these are bad, just hardwire it in there i know some guys that have done that just solder them together that way you're not you got a good flow connection um but i'm just going to finish cleaning these up throw it back together i did unplug that uh all-time hot wire up front that we the jumper cable that we did so we should have switch this back to that we should have nothing, no current flowing to this pigtail right now. Should be zeroed out. Well, let's check that here. Yeah, we got nothing on the, the meter. So I'm going to go ahead and finish cleaning this up, plug it back in, and then we'll see what we get. Okay, so one quick thing while I'm under here is when you hook your multimeter up, if you're hooking it up to the gray wire on the this side when the pigtail is unplugged and you go to put it in the ground side on this and you're not getting anything try grounding it out on anything underneath here just to see what you get i mean any spot will ground out 
And is if you get power at that point, you know you have an issue with your ground because these ground cables, they will go out as well. Um, to check that, you would do a continuity test on that. And this, you can see, follows the taillight harness up into the trunk and continues up through here through here up and over and where it grounds out is right there so you would do a continuity test between point a point b and find the break in that somewhere but that would be your ground for your fuel pump so if you're getting any issues with that check that ground out Right now, as you saw, I had the harness plugged back in. It's just dangling there. Theoretically, we should be able to go to the front here and hear that fuel pump kick on. We'll see. Back at the front of the car, take our jumper cable and put it on there. Nothing. Didn't hear it kick on. Does not mean that it didn't go but we still have no fuel pressure so that just means that our fuel pump is the culprit now I'm gonna go through start dropping the tank down um, that's I know what it is okay drop the tank unhook your battery make sure you don't have any power going through there you got two 13 mils right here. Pop the gas cap off. That's loose. Again, undo your harness. Then you're going to want to get up towards the axle there. So underneath, you're going to have heat shield. That's going to have to come off on both sides. Seven mil, seven north. What you got, zip these off. And they should come right off shoes. If they don't, put some uh, your favorite type of penetrating oil on there. Uh, for the fuel lines, I'm going to take this and push it down and forward. That'll loosen up the uh, holder there. And then you get your vent line, your fuel line, and then your return line. Um, these do have a quick clip connect that are pretty simple to there's a tool you basically put it on the line push it in push the line towards the tool and it'll disconnect same thing as doing a fuel filter which we're going to be doing <clears throat> um just because i can and yeah i'm sure you can get it with uh without this tool but this thing is relatively inexpensive and make your life a heck of a lot easier so for the vent tube it has it looks like just one of those other little style clamps where you take a pair of pliers and clamp it so i'm gonna clamp that might just replace that hose because just rubbing on it it's kind of disintegrating so might just replace on it yeah probably gonna do that bigger and smaller as you can see and you basically you put it around the pipe or the hose, whatever it might be you want to call it. <laughs> like so. You slide it forward into the fitting and then you kind of just work it on like that. And then you just work the work it back and forth until it pops off. Like so. Really simple, quick connect feature. Um, you want to check these out, make sure they're not cracked, frayed, whatever. But yeah, that's all you do. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these off. I did, as you can see, I sprayed them. I just hit them with some um, crow oil just to kind of make sure they were going to be nice and loosened up. But they're pretty decent, so I'm not too worried. It's a bigger one. Let's knock this off. It's right here. Come on. 
and then you spill fuel everywhere. Try not to get it on your phone. So, I'm going to get underneath there now. Take those two bolts off. I have my transmission jack handy. I'm going to support up the fuel tank. If you guys don't have a transmission jack, use a regular floor jack, some kind of a jack. Just support it up there. But I'm going to get underneath there. And I will show you where we're at when we get about ready to drop this thing. So I got the two 15 millimeters off for the straps there and there. You can see I have it supported with my jack here. Um, I am going to remove the back straps here over there to drop the tank down because I think I still got some gas on there. But um, this way I got the straps kind of straddled that I don't have to reposition my jack or anything and it fits well. and. That shouldn't be too hard to pop off. If it starts stripping out or something, I'll uh, come up with a plan B, but that's the game plan right now. Okay, now those are both out, and I'm going to drop the tank down. Just make sure you have this tucked back so this doesn't catch the filler neck when it drops down. And it should just drop right down. Let's, uh, let's, let's see what this does. Let's, let's see what this does. So the tank kind of just comes out. I went ahead and lubed the uh, whole ring up there with some WD-40. I'm going to let that sit for a minute. Uh, take note of your straps. If they are rusted, gross, need to be replaced, repaired, whatever. Now would be the time to change it out. Mine's in pretty good shape still. Also, if you got anything on the bottom side of your car that you want to repair or replace, now would probably be the time to do it. I'm going to get up there. Well, the WD-40 is doing its thing on this filler neck. Just check out underneath there. If there's any spots starting to form in the trunk pan i might hit it with some some paint or some anti don't don't rust out kind of stuff so i'll throw a mat not as bad as i thought it was gonna be it's pretty decent actually just typical stuff up there i am gonna psst, these rails because i can get at them and i'm right here but other than that, I'm going to probably call it good. Snow it again. Lovely. Good three or four inches. Something like that. Anyway, got to get in the garage and finish up that fuel pump on the Impala. Just got it in, so let's get it in. So that's the next day. I went ahead and pssst that one, and I pssst that one, and I ran out of pssst paint. So now I gotta, I got some more. I'm gonna spray bomb that before I get too far along. Um, also, on the upcoming projects of things I need to do, you can see my exhaust is not the prettiest. This side actually hangs down a little bit further than this side. You can kind of see it compared to the axle. I'm going to fix that because it bothers me. And I'm probably going to actually weld that up over there because it's bothering me as well. Anyway, another day. You'd think I would do it now because it tanks out, but no, I'm not going to. So this has been soaking. You can see it's all caked over. <clears throat> that is going to be a 10 mil. We're going to take that out here in just one second. 
Uh, fuel pump I got is a wall burr. Wall burr. Um, got it from Jot Racing. You can check them folks out. JotRacing.com. Pretty cool. North Smith, Rhode Island. Came relatively quick. Came with all the pieces and parts that I'm going to need. Here's my fuel sending unit. I believe I got this off uh, eBay. Pretty cheap. Uh, together, I don't know, 150 bucks. Pump was 88. I decided to go with this one because it's like 255 gallons per hour um, versus like a Delphi one, which is kind of stock. Uh, a little overkill for what I need for the stock motor. However, any upgrades I do end up doing to this motor or getting swapped, that will accommodate what I need. Bigger injectors, whatever. So figured I'm in here. Might as well throw a couple off. 20, 30 bucks more at a pump and get that one. Delphi pump, I think, was 53, 68, somewhere in there. And that was, of course, 88. So do the math, you figure it out, save myself a headache later on down the road. But for now, I've never done one of these. I have no idea how they come apart, but we're going to figure it out. So we need to start by removing the old sending unit. Now, as I mentioned, 10 millimeter comes around. Um, not quite sure. I'm going to guess we're going to have to save this ring and this hardware. So just make sure to save it and put it somewhere decent. Okay, we got six that we pulled off. Six. So now when you get those off, looks like it just comes right up. Oof -da. Of course, I still have fuel in it. And I'm going to guess that the sending unit and everything's got to kind of twist out of there. Yeah, like so. Just be careful when you're in here, fuel, you know, boom. But it's good fuel with the way the prices are these days. So that's an eyeball on the unit here. Uh, looks like fuel pump, of course, is in there. And we got the pickup socks down there. And then we got our float majiggy. Does that stuff. Does science. And that plugs in up there. Relatively simple. I was thinking that the sock was plugged up, but nope. Yeah, I want to get high. Huh. Not too... Terrible, it don't look like. Get you guys in here and show you what it looks like. Not terrible. Seen a lot worse. Joys of having a plastic tank. A show. It's eyeballing what that looks like down there. Down there. Cool. Yeah, overall, not bad. So Let's get on assembly on the uh, the new one. Don't mind my ladder. It's in storage for right now. I'm trying to bash my head on it. Anyways. So, we got this guy. Which, mm -hmm, okay. All right. Very much similar to the one we just yanked out of there. Here's a little... A jigger. Um, guessing that you know this might need to come off. Let's go ahead and pull that off. It's a little smaller than the other one. The other one's pretty decent size. So it looks like our fuel pump's gonna snap onto there somehow, and then it's probably gonna plug in and do something, and then 
it's gonna sit on the inside part right there. Hmm. Okay, all right, all right. Is that gonna move or do anything? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's let's see what this is. Okay, so we got some sort of uh, holder thing. We got a looks like a new sock, probably for the bottom of the fuel pump. Okay. So <clears throat> there's the pump. I'm guessing that's got to come off. Pump's got a little screen on it. Guessing this has got to come off as well. Like so. Mm -hmm. So they're pretty similar to a windshield washer pump. If you ever seen one of those in the bottle. Probably a little bit more rated for fuel though. I think we do. This ring probably the same as that one. We've got two different sizes, so we'll have to figure that out. Um, instructions. Got that rubber. Got that rubber. Another hose. Another plug. Another sock. And we got clamp. So there's the old one. I'm guessing that our sock just kind of twists out there. I'll twist it off. It doesn't look like it matters too much how that thing goes on there. It looks like it's just kind of a cushion. And it's actually pretty loose in there. So I'm going to leave that one on there and just drop it on there. But from there, I got lots of fuel hanging out. It's pretty much just plug and play, drop it in there, and it kind of just floats around. So it's even more cleverer, -er, 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 as it's got a little <laughs> spring thing on it, pushes down. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, pop this cutter key out, like so. And I'm guessing it's gonna let me release that guy like so. Probably, you may or may not need to unplug it up here. Put the pump in and out more gooder or <clears throat> so go ahead and unplug it and look at that it comes apart you learn something new every day so now this pump can slide in out without struggling and i'm gonna pull the other one apart too just to see what it looks like so similar we got a that out of the way because we're not reusing that. And we have our cutter key on that one as well. That slides apart. Pump snapped in there. It looks like it's just got these little Come on. clips over Come here. On so I'll go ahead and do I gotta unplug this first? Maybe. Try to pry them off. Maybe. Let's see, like so. I guess yeah. if you're just changing the pump and using your old fuel sending unit, this is what you'd be doing anyway. I would say be careful with these because stuff like that gets brittle. Yep. Something like that. So you can see the old pump is kind of in there. This side goes towards that. Tubey sticks out on the one side. Let's see. Old one's going to have to remove the sock. It's down there. Push up and twist. 
just rip it off. We just went ahead and ripped it off. And there's the old pump. So now the old GM pump's got this big one on there. That's interesting. So one of the reasons why you get like the funny gauge in your car where it's like, woo, and then you got like, um, I don't know, half tank, and then all of a sudden it just goes down. It's because this, when it goes up, it's like flat. And the float, when it floats in there, it just kind of gives you false reading. Whereas your new one, it pivots. As you can see it pivots with your right angle. So that's going to give you more of an accurate fuel reading on your gauge in the front. Common issue with these cars, and that's one of them. Second reason could be continuity, wires and all that, and then the ground corroding out. But that's why, because this thing is able to spin more freely, so it'll give you more of an accurate reading. So, nothing wrong with this, just it seems to work out very well. Um, kind of another common issue, you can see on the part in there, it's kind of going brown. They get hot, they burn out, and them contacts will wear out, and that's another issue with your gauge it might be going crazy if it's not the contact or the plug or the floater but that's usually the problem there final answer we are going to go with the one from here because that was the one that gn put in there see it helps take stuff apart or just look it up on youtube and then have me figure it out for you and then you can just do it the right way the first time so here we are that's back in there. How did I say that was supposed to go? Pluggy was supposed to go towards that way. Like so. So go ahead and just put it on there. I would seat it down carefully. You're not going to be able to twist that, so good reference to get it in there the right way the first time. Okay. Reassemble the way we took apart. We want to put our rat gasket on there because there's no way to get it on otherwise. So let's put that on there. Okay, so when you put that in, make sure to get it so your tube fits on there properly because when this is on there you got to put the hosey side in with the the male side there and you got to have them conceive and have kids clip click like so okay so now what we got to do This wire plugs into here, like so. And tab is over. And then this has got to plug into our fuel pump, like so. Click. And then our connector has got to connect. I click. All right. Check out the socket. Oh yeah, you can definitely feel a difference in the material. This one's the one that came with it. A lot, a lot more gooder. There we go. Okay. All right. So now our old setup, we're going to need this snap ring off the top. 
looks like it's very delicate to get on and off of there. Do something like that. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up really quick and then put it back on the new one. Okay, so there's the old gasket that was underneath on the old sending unit. This is the new one. Comes with two different sizes, as I mentioned, they can be universal for a couple different cars. I wanna fish all this stuff through, like so. So once that's on there, it will sit in there a certain way. It has these little lock tabs that'll go when it locks in and you'll see that it drops down. This of course faces the front of the tank and our gasket is going to fit around all this stuff nice and gentile and it's going to sit right on the top side there so let's go ahead and put this guy in now it's all back in there we want to carefully put this back in nice and slow okay down So I would say your biggest thing is to make sure that that sock doesn't fall off. Gently just fish it in there and it'll go. And then this does have that spring-loaded action that helps it seat on the bottom to use every little bit of fuel you can use. So as promised, I got that all, you know, peed up. And, and I went ahead and just kind of painted up my bracketry. I uh, figured it's out, might as well. Got a little bit of a drip there. Whoopsies. This is the paint that I used. It's rust protecting by Cryolone. It's gloss and enamel. Uh, sure, it was on sale. So let's put that back with all around the other stuff I use is that stuff because it's 99 cents for black at Walmart, and it works well. Anywho's, so to recap, I have my transmission jack underneath there. I lifted it up, put my gas tank straps up underneath there, <clears throat> kind of set it down, balanced it on the uh, jack there, and kind of finagled it into position doesn't want to slosh that way because I got a lot of gas and it goes back and forth and it wants to tip off. However, I have it supported over there with a block currently so I can get all my tools staged to where I need to. Don't want to do that. Why do I 
doesn't seem like it's been here before. So you gotta go something like there. You, feller, or fellette. there just just go now you go oh ho, ho, ho. okay what, what what about this say Back ones go on like that. Wet paint. Now what I'm doing? This has got to go on there somehow. It's back in here. Get you in here. Okay, lines are clipped on there. Came with a new plastic fitting, so I just removed them. Vent tube, I just slid it on there, put that clamp on there. It's probably not pushed back all the way, but stretched it out. Yeah, it's just a vent tube, it's fine. Um, heat shield's back on, straps hooked up. Last thing we got to do is we got a Put that one on, the nut on each side, then we have to plug in the connector. I did put some dielectric grease in there, I found it. You can see it in there. If you don't have any, get some, put it in there. Um, I'm gonna find something to do with this little setup here because I don't really care for it that much. But yeah, then we're gonna get on to changing out the fuel filter. Okay, so fuel filter time. I've actually had this one for a while. As you can see, I wrote it on there. Part number is MicroGuard. It's the replacement for Wix, Fram, whatever. Premium filter. I think I got this one at O'Reilly's, 11 bucks. Universal, it's got one body bolt that goes in there and then your two fuel lines. So it is on the driver's side of your B body or D body if you got the Fleetwood or Mackwood or 
Cadillac version of this thing. And you can see it right there. Um, let's do this one right here. Undo your fuel lines and put the new one in and pop it on. So I'm gonna do that right now. So underneath here, that is gonna be a half inch 13 mil. These clips, they're pretty simple. You just squeeze the top part, push the line in and it comes right off. Take some finesse. But these are different than the ones on the gas tank where you need the little tool. Why don't you guys tell me I have stuff on my face? Anyway, um, because these are made to be changed out. So now that it's changed out, I did spill a little bit, but it's okay. That's what dripped out of the old one. Now that's changed out. Fuel lines are hooked back up on the tank. Got the wire hooked back up. Now what should we do? Probably test it out and make sure we don't have any leaks. Good plan. Let's go. By the who, I will say, if you guys spill any fuel and you're in an enclosed area, the fumes are flammable, so don't blow yourselves up. Those sparks and all that. Turn the fan on really quick. That way, when it blows up, it'll blow up a lot more. Kidding. Yeah, you just don't want stuff to go kaboom with a spark. All right. Hooking my battery back up. Just loosely, so I can make sure I got, got power. Got fire extinguisher on hand. Got power going back to the car. Remember our little jumper thing that we made? Okay, so we get our little jumper guy plugged back in and we're gonna listen for the fuel pump to kick on. Hear it? I hear it. So we done did squirt a lot of stuff in there. See what kind of pressures we got. We got pressure on our gauge. Drew up almost 40, which we want 38 to 40. Let's check and see if we got any fresh leaks coming out of this stuff. What about under here? What are you telling me? You see anything? I don't see anything. What about underneath? You got anything underneath? No. So that's good. That means it was cycling through. We got pressure building back up to the motor and our fuel pump was bad. So let's go ahead and purge off the fuel off of our gauge, unhook that, put the cap back on wherever I put that. See if this thing will fire up. It's just what I use for a catch-all can. Yeah, pop it in there. Where's pressure release? Cool. Tell you what, you ain't got a bunch of zip ties to do that. You gotta reevaluate your life. What are you even doing? Gotta have zip ties laying around. Anyways, so now we got this thing all buttoned up as we want it to be. You know we got pressure up front. Should be no reason why it doesn't fire up. There's a reason why it doesn't fire up. Uh-oh, let's figure it out. So now, let's go ahead and we'll prime up the system. You hear it flowing and it's probably returning down to the tank. And a 
of stops. Okay. Let's see if that was it. Maybe that was a step that I forgot. Okay, she's just gonna do it. There we go. Well, fill pump kicks on now with a key, so we know everything's working. Well, concern I have is now the gauge is not accurate, so we might have to figure out what's up with that. Oh, it is slowly dropping down. Okay. Probably just got to calibrate. All right, Al is back to running. Smoke's coming off because I put some WD-40 on the headers because that's my next project and I forgot about that. Actually, gonna let this thing get up to operating temperature and make sure everything's good and kill her down. Be back with you. Okay. Ran. It's a little smoky in here. Just messing with the uh, AC here. That'll be in an upcoming video. She runs. Runs fine. Uh, I think my gauge going showing full is because car is still, of course, up on jack stands. It's fine. So, good. So to recap, fuel pump, fuel filter, tested the system. Yeah. So, I think we did well. We're going to go ahead and end this video. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next time.